question two. Now this is very similar to question one on this exam, except for now we're having a problem going larger in ring size. So in the previous example, we talked about not being able to get to an SP2 hybridization easily as we go from the five-membered ring down to four, down to three, and slowing things down dramatically. As it turns out, we get a slowdown as we go larger. And that's kind of odd. We would expect a trend here somewhere, so it can't be just angle if it's getting slower in both directions from a five-membered ring. So there's something odd about that six-membered ring. And this is where we talk about cyclohexanes. You know, we did that in the previous exam, but we haven't escaped it. You'll never, ever escape cyclohexane, ever. As long as you deal with any structure anywhere, you'll be back looking at chair conformations at some point. Trust me on that. So what's going on there? That case doesn't specify confirmation, so we can look at both of them and see if there's anything useful as we do. So we could have that halogen in the equatorial position. We could have it in the axial position. With hydrogen equatorial. Very much like what we drew in the previous one, though, we have to consider what's going on in the transition state. So that's a little bit easier to see in some of these than others. So in the first case here, we'd be looking at essentially having an approach of the nucleophile here. And that's going to have a problem. That's approaching essentially right through what would be the axial positions. So there's no diaxial interactions in that ring by itself, but there's a problem with the approach. So that's not good. It's going, slow, it's going to slow things down. Well, what if it's in the other conformation? Well, here I have an ax, a diaxial interaction to begin with. And as I look at rehybridizing that, I would be looking at the nucleophile coming in and the halogen going out, essentially, in both cases here, I'm going to have a rehybridization. In one case, at the transition state, I'm going to have a nucleophile in one position here and the leaving group in the other. So in one case, the bromine, let's say the left case here, the nucleophile's got a problem. It's coming in close to those axial positions. In the other case, exactly the same layout. Only the nucleophile and the bromine are switching places. Because they started off, well, the bromine started off in the other conformation. But we're still asking for basically the same geometry in the transition state, that sp2 carbon in the transition state. So in one case, we're basically forcing the nucleophile to bounce up against those axial hydrogens. In the other case, it's the bromine. So neither one's particularly good. Neither of these is ideal. Obviously, this confirmation had a problem to begin with. So that's not good. So that's unlikely to be a resting confirmation because the bromine is fairly large. So just from the beginning, we're looking at this being probably the confirmation that it starts in. But to get that to react, I'm still having to get a nucleophile essentially right through those axial positions with much worse interactions than a regular typical diaxial interaction would be 
as we go. Because for this to work, if that had worked, if the left case had been the reaction and we went through this transition state, well, now my fairly large nucleophile is axial. So even if I don't really consider the transition state, I have to consider where it ends up. It ends up in an energetically bad spot, interacting with those hydrogens in a diaxial fashion. In the other case, I had a diaxial to begin with, so I won't have it when I'm done. And again, the chair conformations can flip once this is formed, but you can't flip chairs in the middle of the, the reaction. So while I could say, all right, well, the first bromine doesn't have that, and then as soon as this product forms, it flips to the other conformation, yes. But you can't avoid a problem here. No matter which conformation you have, you have a problem in the transition state because of those axial positions. Either your nucleophile is going to hit them, or your leaving group is going to be pushed into them because of the change in geometry in the transition state of that carbon. So both cases here, problematic. The result? This reaction is about a thousand times slower than the one for cyclopentane or the one for the open chain version.